On the 11th of February, our church celebrates the Feast of St. Theodora. The following are some thoughts on her life and works. Royalty has its advantages, but the influence of a monarch's wife does not often hold sway, particularly in a complex issue such as iconoclasm, which for 150 years had divided the Greek Orthodox Church. Much as Theodora abhorred the idea of stripping church interiors of icons, it is to her everlasting credit that rather than let herself be swayed in her determination, much as she chose to sway the emperor herself, she lived in the hope that the icons would one day be restored and that the issue would be settled in her lifetime, although it had stormed for three lifetimes. If for nothing else, this profoundly religious woman and empress could have been sainted for her unyielding stand on the issue when she could have chosen a course of resignation or indifference. Claims and counterclaims, lay and cleric, swirled about her, and she had but to join sides with the iconoclasts, and that in itself might very well have settled the question once and for all after a century and a half of dissension. It could very well be that it was Theodora's courageous stand that made a difference. Hers was not a voice of the wilderness. It emanated and echoed from the palace. The echo of her voice of protest never died, and our churches are what they are today because she refused to be stilled. She was not a nun. She was an emperor's wife, but a handmaiden of God by her own choice. During this period, iconoclasm was a strong, swift-moving force which swept the empire. The supporters of the iconoclastic movement believed that icons should be purged from the churches. They thought that veneration of icons was tantamount to idolatry. In fact, many Orthodox Christians had come to believe that icons, rather than being symbolic, were to be worshipped for themselves. As a reaction against this false understanding of the place of icons in Orthodox worship, many favoured the complete elimination of icons, believing that they were fighting against idolatry. Some emperors issued decrees banishing icons from the churches and persecuting anyone possessing icons. Theophilos was such an iconoclast emperor, but due solely to the efforts of his most noble wife Theodora, he was the last. After 150 years, iconoclasm was finally defeated. During the reign of her iconoclast husband, Theodora secretly possessed many icons. She would kneel in prayer and meditation before her icons, firm in the belief that the time was at hand when the icons would, would once again resume their rightful place in the house of God. Shortly after the death of Emperor Theophilos, one of the first official acts of Empress Theodora as regent for her son Michael III was to reinstate the icons. To do this, she convoked a general synod of 843 AD. This synod formally accepted the use of icons in Orthodox worship, affirming that the veneration is paid to Christ and the saints depicted on the icons and not to the material substance of the paint and wood. This historic decision is celebrated each year in the Orthodox Church on the first Sunday of Lent, known as the Sunday of Orthodoxy. Thus, Empress Theodora gave all her support to the recognition of icons as an essential element of Orthodox worship, and in so doing proved to be an instrument of God's glory. In her lifetime, Empress Theodora revealed her true nature to be more religious than civic, and because of her faith and devotion to Christ, the church became as mighty as the empire. With her precious icons before her, she died on the 11th of February, 859, a true champion of the Orthodox faith. <laughs>